I'm changing. <laughs> this is just for a thumbnail. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Tets, and today we'll be talking about how can you become a doctor in the Philippines. So since I got into med school, one of the questions I often get is what is your specialization? How long does it take you to become a doctor? Am I specializing in anything? Where I am right now in my career? Becoming a doctor is a very confusing process for a lot of people and admittedly, I only had a whole grasp of where I was going with my med journey when I was in my graduating year in med school. So I thought I'll make a very brief video that covers the general process behind becoming a doctor here in the Philippines. Now, a couple of disclaimers, number one being, in this video, I'll be talking about the conventional way, the traditional way of someone becoming a specialist doctor here in the Philippines. This is the most common career path for Filipino doctors, but there are a lot of other career options for you to pursue, and i just like to emphasize that this is not the only way for you to practice medicine here in the country. If this specialization path is not for you, then it doesn't have to be. Disclaimer number two is that process will vary from country to country, med school to med school, and from hospital to hospital. And as much as possible, I'll try to encompass most of the general options you have. But I'm not going to be talking about the nitty gritty of each process. So do your research, but I'll just be touching the surface of the topic. I hope through this video, some of these will become clear to some of you, especially if you are planning to become a doctor here in the Philippines in the future. So you're interested in becoming a doctor. The first thing you'll do is you'll have to graduate from senior high school. After that, you proceed to your college where you will be taking up your pre-med courses. Health allied courses have been labeled traditionally as pre-med courses, such as nursing, med tech, physical therapy, occupational therapy, biology, psychology. However, in the recent years, those restrictions are no longer in place. I even have a batchmate who are graduates of foreign language, music, accountancy, business. So when we're talking about pre-med, just keep in mind that it's any course you'll be taking prior to med school. However, it's important to make sure that you also know the requirements of your med school. For example, I have batchmates who had to take extra science units separate from the college degree that they took for them to be admissible for med school. So just make sure to do your research and know what are the requirements of your med school of your choice. So this will typically take anywhere from three to five years depending on your course, college you're going to, and depending on whether you'll be graduating on time or not, which is not an issue at all because life is a journey and not a race. And if you'll have to take your time during your college, that is no problem. Med journey is a really long one, so don't feel pressured if you are not graduating on time. It is not a big deal at all. So after you complete your college degree, you proceed to your med school. But before you get into med school, you'll have to take this exam called NMAT, which stands for National Medical Admission Test. And on this test, you'll be tested for different subjects such as general science, social science, math, abstract thinking, those stuff. It is one of the requirements for all med schools here in the Philippines. Now there are two testing periods, one in September, one in November, and one in March. Now do your research as to when your application for the med school of your choice will start so that you can adjust your NMAT accordingly. And you are eligible to take your NMAT at the graduating year of your college. So around Two years prior to graduating your college, you have to keep that in mind so that you can plan your application for NMAT if you are going to review school for NMAT, as I did, so that you can plan ahead of time. Unless you plan to take a rest after your college year before going into med school. You have to keep in mind though that NMAT is not a measure as to how good of a doctor you're going to be. However, it is one of the requirements of the med school application and some med schools require specific NMAT scores. It is important for you to know what is the NMAT score that they require. So keep that in mind in case there's an NMAT score that you have to be aiming for. So you're done with your NMAT and you graduate your college and you get into your dream med school. Congratulations! Now you'll be spending somewhere from four to six years in med school. For most med schools here in the Philippines, the first three years will be spending in the classroom and one last year, you'll be working at the hospital as a doctor for your clinical exposure. Some schools like Ateneo and UP integrates their postgraduate internship program into their med school, hence 
they have additional one year. So they have three years of classroom and two years of clinical exposure. And if you want to skip the pre-med process completely, few med schools in the country offers the so-called intermed or straight to medicine program, wherein you can skip the pre-med course entirely and go straight into medicine, which is six years long course. And not a lot of schools offer it. If I'm not mistaken, La Salle, UB, and USD. So you might want to do your research on that if that's something interesting to you. So after your four to six years in med school, you earn your medical degree. But prior to become licensed here in the Philippines, you have to go through one year of internship program. You apply to your hospital of choice through the ATMC and they will assign you to a hospital. Now how the internship will look like will vary from hospital to hospital. One factor being is it a public or public hospital, private or public hospital, the type of work, and duty schedule also varies from hospital to hospital. There's so many factors that goes into choosing your internship program. And as of filming, that's where I am right now. But aside from this stipend offered in some hospitals, it is basically an unpaid internship program. And you have to do this for one year for you to be qualified for your board exam. And again, going back, if you're going to med school with a five-year program like Ateneo and UP, this part is integrated into the med school. So you don't have to worry about this part. And then you graduate from your internship program and then you are now eligible for the physician licensure exam or the board exam. And then when you pass your board exam, congratulations, you're finally a licensed physician and you can start working as a GP and start earning, finally. So that's around 9 years of studying and then you finally can earn. However, if you plan to pursue a specialization program, you don't stop there. Specialization training is also called the residency. Depending on the residency you're taking up, this will usually span from 3 to 7 years. Dermatology, pediatrics, and internal medicine spanning from three years to something very long such as neurosurgery which can take up to seven years. So what the residency training will look like will vary again from hospital to hospital and between training programs. After you graduate from your residency program, you are now considered a specialty doctor. You can end your training here, but if you want to further specialize into a specific field in your specialization, you can opt for a fellowship program. This is where your title becomes even more fancy like endovascular surgeon, pulmonologist, developmental pediatrician, pediatric surgeon, cardiologist, thoracic and cardiovascular surgeon. So this could take anywhere from few months to few years. And then when you graduate your fellowship program, you are now considered finally as consultant. You won't go to duties anymore, you are more of on-call, you are now the big boss of the hospital, you are now the expert in your field. So all in all, typically you'll be going for 4 years of college, 4 years of med school, 1 year of postgrad internship, 3-5 to five years of residency training, fellowship which is few months, few years, and then consultancy. So again, this is a very simplified view of becoming a specialized doctor and you may opt to take breaks in between and you may also opt to go for a less popular choice such as practicing as GP. Well, some people plan to eventually go into specialization training but work as a GP in the meantime, they're called as the moonlighters. So they're like working as a part-time doctor in a clinic or hired by hospitals as needed basis. In the Philippines, you also have the program called the Doctors to the Virus or the DTTP program wherein you get deployed to a rural area in the country and you serve the underserved people of the country as a general practitioner. This program comes with a salary and degree in public health after you finish the training program. And while not the most popular option, but nonetheless very important, are the health policy making, medical research, and other advocacy work. So there you have it. That's a very simplified view of how to become a doctor here in the Philippines. And I made a written article linked down below for you to view. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button. If you have any questions about this very long and confusing journey, comment them down below. I'll try to get back to you. So far, I've been coming up with new videos every week, so hit the subscribe button. Bye guys. <laughs> I decided I'll do a reshoot of the whole thing because it's so... It's so hot here right now, and I could see myself in a viewfinder. I was so pissed. I, I try not to shoot with my AC and my electric fan on because of the audio, but I just couldn't do it. <laughs> it's too hot. So I decided I'll just have my lunch first, have some iced coffee, and we're good to go.